have an intent, and God has an intent. But I don't know about you, I want my intent to be lined up perfectly with his. To embrace God's view and God's image of you. Embracing yourself. And so there are things that we want to share, and there are things that I think are pertinent for us to begin to lay hold of. And so that's number one, is to set an intention. And one of the things that you can also do to embrace the real you is to celebrate your strengths. Because, you know, the enemy doesn't want you to even understand that you even have any strengths. For a long time, he didn't want any of us to think that we could contribute anything or be of any value, be of any worth, not to know our worth, not to know our value, to devalue ourselves, to demean ourselves, to think that we're inferior, we have no purpose, we have no plan, that God created women as a second thought, as an afterthought. But I'm here to tell you tonight that there are strengths, there are things on the inside of you, and God wants you to celebrate those things. He wants you to celebrate Jesus first and foremost, to celebrate the fact that you are so precious that he sent his son to die on your behalf, the most precious gift that heaven had to offer, the most priceless thing. There was no price that was too much to be paid by sending his son. And these are the strengths that are on the inside of us. These are the jewels, the revelations, the things that we have when we receive Jesus into our life. That we are royalty, that we're a part of the royal priesthood, a chosen generation, peculiar, Amen? Amen? We're fearfully, we're wonderfully made. How do you know? We have been made as a unique expression of the Father. Fearfully, wonderfully made by him. And so these are things that the enemy does not want us to embrace. He doesn't want us to embrace our distinctiveness, our uniqueness. He wants us all to think that we've got to be alike. And when we're not alike, then we just try to copy each other. And when we do a dishonor trying to copy somebody, then we just give up and cave in and quit. But there are strengths that God wants to just put on the inside of you that only you can reveal to this world, that only you can be able to connect with other people. And I'm telling you, we can do this in these last days. There's a generation, there's a movement of women that this world has not ever seen before. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna be smack dab right in the middle of something big, something great. There's a great army of women that's going to take over and usher in the return of the Lord that this world has never seen before. And we just have to make up in our minds that I intend to be right in the middle of it. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And we can begin to get a hold of this as we begin to see ourselves as the apple of the Father's eye. His delight, the focus and the object of his affection. That's who you are tonight. And that's who we celebrate tonight. We celebrate Jesus. We celebrate him. Because I, I don't know about you, I know that if it were not for him, I could not be able to stand before you. I could not be out of a place of fear. and couldn't be in a place of protection and under his uh, shelter. But it's because of Jesus that we can be able to celebrate and not to have to measure ourselves by one another and compare ourselves in the midst of one another. How I many you know he loves us all the same? Flaws and all, and it's all good. So it's time to celebrate your strengths tonight. And so there are things that I think that we can be able to really draw from the Lord on, and we can begin to see the value that God wants to experience from one another. Now, let me share a couple things with you. Most people really don't like themselves. And this is a bigger problem that we really can understand. If we don't get along with ourselves, as I said, we won't get along with other people. Is that true? When we reject ourselves, it may seem to us that others even reject us because we're so conscious of that seed of that source, of that thought, that the least little thing, what you trying to say? What do you mean by that? What are you trying to do? Where did that come from? Why has it got to be all that?
And so, you know, there's this sense of insecurity that all of a sudden affects how we relate with other people. And there's this self-hatred, there's this self-loathing that if we're not careful of, it just causes the enemy just to find a resting place. So I'm telling you, it's time to embrace the real you. The real you. The real you on the inside. The real hidden you that nobody sees, that nobody sees but Jesus. That's the real you. And so self-rejection and self-hatred, they're the causes of many demonic and evil things and the cause of many relational problems and relationship problems. And so we have to understand and have to learn how to relate with ourselves. And like we said, we spend more time with ourselves than with anybody else. Amen? Amen. And so it is vital in these last days that we get along with one another. So let me give you a few things. I'm going to just hit them really quick. And I want you to get a hold of these. I'm going to put some things on the screen. Twelve ways that you can embrace you. Number one, I can't quite see the screen. Number one is to set an intention. Number two, celebrate your strengths. Got a thumbs up. Number three, consider the people around you. I mean, oh, that's a big one. Consider the people who are around you. Because who you hang around has a lot to do with the quality of your life and the quality of your relationships. If they're always trying to compare, if they're always trying to put you down, if they're always talking about themselves, it's all about them and it's never about trying to be a blessing in your life, you have to consider and take notes of these things. And so it's important to be around people who can add value to you and value God and value his word and what you can see taking place in their life and not those who want to rob and always compare you to other people. Number four, create a support system. That's important. These are just basic everyday things that I think are important to create a system of support. Thank God for the word of God and that we can have support through the local church. There are mentors in my life. Dr. Betty Price, she's been a support system to me ever since Griffalo and I got engaged and she continues to be that to this day. So get around mentors and get around people who cross the finish line and people who can speak into your life and understand the path that you're on and can embrace what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And not those who are naysayers and uh, negative, and tearing you down. So that's important. Number five, forgive yourself. That's a big one. To forgive yourself. So many times we hold on to things we haven't forgiven ourselves of stuff from the past. And as a result, it's just baggage, it's luggage. It causes us not to see God's best for us. We don't see his opinion and his image of us because these things cloud our view of who we are. So even as God has forgiven us, we have to forgive ourselves. So that's a very important because unforgiveness will make you unhealthy. I mean, you know that. It will make you unhappy. This is what unforgiveness will do. It'll make you sick. And if you're sour in life, sour about relationships, sour about how you look, sour about everything, then how many of you know that will cause a seed of insecurity on the inside of you? You won't feel good about what God has done on the inside of you. So these are things that we must begin to understand because God's expression of beauty is on the inside of you. He says that we can behold the beauty of the Lord because we have his beauty on the inside of us. And real beauty comes from him. He's the source of all beauty. And we have that on the inside of us. 
And so as a child of God, we can put it on. And how many of you know we can put it in by looking into the mirror of his word? Number six, hush your critics. Shush your inner critics. The world says all kinds of things, wants you not to believe the word of God and the value of the word of God, but we have to believe the thoughts that God has for us. If you're not a size two, how many know that song says it's all about the bass? <laughs> no trouble. Somebody said, what? That's all right, just don't even worry about it. Psalms 139 says, how precious are your thoughts unto me. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. How precious are his thoughts towards us tonight as women. If we could just see the thoughts of the Lord and how precious he sees us. If we can count them, if we can be able to understand God's love and his view and opinion of us and not rob him of the great destiny and the great intent that he has on the inside of us. And then Psalms 8 and 5 says that we've been made a little lower than Elohim and he's crowned us with glory and with honor. So hush your inner critics. That old past, that old thing that says, you know, wants to pull you back and get you in the flesh and make you say stuff that you don't need to say, just bless God. I'm not that old person. I'm embracing the real me. Number seven, let go of the unrealized dreams. Let go of things from the past. In fact, I think I wrote something a little different. Does it say let go? What does it say on there? Okay, yeah, that's a different one too. My intent was to allow us to be thankful for those things that we have gone through and to begin to understand that God wants us to be a people who are thankful for where we are, to thank him in all things. Perhaps we aren't where we are or where we want to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be, amen? And so maybe there's a place of just being consistently constant, being patient, and being consistent, holding on and just thanking God for where we are in this time and season in our life. Perhaps the dream hadn't come exactly how you envisioned or this time in the season of your life, but just thank God that you please him because we are under the blood and we please him by faith and we thank him by faith for those things that he's doing on the inside of us. So we're not throwing in the towel, we're not caving in, we're not giving up, we're not quitting, but we're being patient. Just being patient. Because God has the final say-so and perhaps there's certain things that need to take place and we just have to trust him every step of the way. Number eight, perform charitable acts. That means to serve, to sow, to worship to bow down and just worship him, to give him our all, to give him our best. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, to let it be the hidden person of the heart, the best you, the hidden you, the real you. That's the real you, is that hidden person that we can't see, but God sees. He says, which is an imperishable quality of a gentle and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, a great prize. He says to worship him with that, to bow down and live a life that is yielded to him, blessed to be a blessing, a worshiper, trusting him, giving him ourselves, and let that be the act of our life. Number nine, realize that acceptance is not resignation. Realize that acceptance is not resignation. There are things in our life that God wants us to begin to trust him for. There are things that, you know, we just have to give him final say so and in his time and to not be weary in well-doing for in this season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen? Amen. Number 10. Am I going too fast? 
all right, I'm looking forward to Beth Moore. I never heard her live, so bless God, I want to get into it. <laughs> Speak to your divine self. How many of you know, if you don't speak over yourself, the enemy's just going to speak, and other people will speak over you. But it's time for us to speak over ourselves, to speak to that spirit that's lying dormant and to begin to call yourself those things that are in line with the word of God. I am the righteousness of God. I am bold as a lion. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am chosen by him. I am the apple of my daddy's eye. He loves me with unfailing, unconditional love. He wants to do me good and he wants to make me happy. I'm the prize of his possession. I'm the focus of his eye. I believe that he loves me. I have no doubt that my father has a plan and a purpose for me. Thoughts to prosper me, to give me a future, to give me a hope in him. We have to begin to speak over ourselves, remind ourselves of these things. Speak over our divine self. Number 11, be kind to ourselves. Proverbs 19 verse 22 says, what is desirable in a man is his kindness. To be kind to yourself, not harsh, not critical, not judgmental, not fault finding on yourself. Be kind. Somebody say kind. kind. Kind to yourself. Be gracious to yourself. When we can be gracious to ourselves, then we can be gracious with other people. But you know, we're hard on ourselves. Oh, I'm so stupid for doing that. Oh, I'm so dumb. I can't believe I did that. I'm just like so-and-so. No. But let's begin to understand that grace is able to give us the ability to receive from God. And that same grace that we receive from God that we can even operate and show it with other people.